Once you've made your energizer selection and you've got it installed, you need to be sure to consider your ground rods. You know, how many ground rods do we need on a fence? And you know, that can really depend on your soil conditions. That can also depend on what size energizer you've got. Obviously, if you have a charger that's about a one joule energizer, you probably could get by with about two ground rods. If you step up to an energizer that has six output joules, you need to have probably at least three or four ground rods and that can be dependent upon your soil conditions. If you've got a soil that is well drained, does not hold much moisture, you're gonna to need to add a couple extra ground rods, uh, you know, compared to a heavier soil that does retain that moisture. A way that you can check that is go out there, you know, when you've got your energizer running, you've got it hooked up to some ground rods, go out there and actually short your fence out. Take a piece of rebar, take an old T-post or something like that and lean it over on your fence. You're creating a load and putting a short on that fence. Go to your last ground rod, you know, if you've got, let's say, three of them and they're hooked up in parallel, we go from our ground terminal on the charger to our first ground rod, it's hooked over to our second to our third. Go to that last ground rod and check the voltage on that ground rod just like we would if we were checking it on a fence. And if you've got anything, you know, say a 1.0 on a digital voltmeter or higher, you definitely need to add another ground rod. Ideally, you would like to be able to check that last ground rod and have no voltage on it. So. Um, you know, 0 0.5 or higher, you probably want to add another ground rod, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 we could live with, but you get up there to a 0 0.8, 1.0 on a voltmeter, you know you need to add another ground rod. So hopefully that'll help you in selecting an energizer, you know, understanding, you know, how many ground rods you may need to put on there, and uh, hopefully you'll have a fence that you'll be happy with. Okay, we've got our fence built. It's about two months down the road. All of a sudden we've had some weeds grow up on this fence or a deer has ran through and knocked an insulator off and we've got a problem on the fence. We know that because our voltage has dropped. We've got out here and walked this fence and we cannot find where our problem is at. One thing that'll help save you some time um, and a lot of footsteps is if you will get yourself a uh, some type of fault finder. This will help you locate and pinpoint where exactly a short is on the fence line. And how you're going to read a fault finder is typically you want to start near you know your energizer and and literally check each individual strand your voltage is pretty much going to be the same on there because as you saw earlier we've got our um, you know all of our lines are tied in together right here so the voltage will be the same but what we're looking at on trying to find a short with a fault finder is we're looking at the amp reading if you're between your energizer and where the short is at, let's just say we had a problem, you know, right here in this area, um, and the energizer's back behind me. If I check this fence on this top strand right here, and I've got, let's just say I've got 20 or 25 amps, that's a high number. I want to see zero's ideal, but you know, if you've got anything five or less, you're in pretty good shape. But if we've got a high amp reading right here, let's say we've got 25 amps, and then we come down the fence line a little bit and we check it, we did not see our problem, but now all of a sudden we've got six amps. So we've seen a significant drop here from 25 to six. We know we've went too far. So basically to sum that up, if you're between the energizer and the short, you're gonna have a high amp reading on your fault finder. If you go beyond the short, that amp reading is gonna drop because when you've got a short on a fence, that creates amperage and those amps are going off into that fault wherever your, you know, your ground may be there. So a fault finder will definitely help save you some time, help save you some steps and uh, you know, help you find a problem if that does uh, happen on your fence line and that's just a matter of time and it will. A tool that can help you find and know when you've got a short on your fence I've got, a, I've got a device here that's called a fence alert. There's a few others out there on the market that will help basically notify you and let you know when you've got a problem on your fence. With this one right here, what there's some settings on the back and we're gonna slide this button all the way to the top. There's a number two on here. It sets the internal sensor at 2,500 volts. So we're gonna hang this fence alert on our fence line and when our voltage drops to 2,500 or lower, this is gonna start flashing and blinking at us. So we know we've got a problem when we see this blinking. So this is something that you wanna hang, you know, along your driveway, maybe along the, around behind the barn or somewhere around your house where you can see this. And it's definitely pretty bright right at dusk, right there as it's getting dark, you can really see this fence alert blinking. But uh, you know, what it does is it alerts you when you've got a problem on a fence. So that's something that like I say, will help you know when you do have a problem or maybe also when your fence needs some attention but this is a device that like i say you just open it up and it's just going to clip right on your fence line here and uh and hang there and it'll go to blinking so 
that's something you can look at uh, putting on your fence as well. Hopefully these techniques from you know hooking up your bracing system to energizer selection and grounding I hope that's something that you'll find beneficial and that I hope you'll be able to implement on your farm and you'll find that using a high tensile electric fence is, a, is definitely an easy way to you know, keep your animals contained and then also with the rotational grazing, it's a good way to get the best utilization out of your forages. Thank you.